If you are praying like this, stop. It's witchcraft. Eight prayers. You should stop praying. First prayer is the prayer to angels, Mary, or saints. Christians are instructed to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus by the help of the Holy Spirit. We don't pray to God through angels or saints because Jesus is our mediator. So think of this. Let's say that you have a direct access to me and then I have an assistant. You would probably go directly to me, right? You wouldn't go through an assistant. We have direct access to Jesus. We have direct access to the Holy Spirit. Why would you want to go through somebody? Plus, the Bible never gave us that path or directions to God. Jesus is the way, not His mother, not a saint. We honor His mother. We honor saints. And we receive the ministry of angels. But all of these are not the way. Jesus is. The second prayer you should stop praying is a prayer that is a formulaic prayer without heart. A genuine prayer must be heartfelt, not just a repetitive chant or formula. Matthew 6, 7. Jesus says that heathens pray like this and they think through many of their words they will be heard. So this has to do more with your heart than your words. If you put all the emphasis in the words or in the formula or in the ritual of prayer, but you miss the most important, which is the heart. You're praying a prayer that is not going to be effective. Third prayer you should stop praying is a prayer that seeks to curse or harm others. Christians are called to bless others, even our enemies. Romans 12, 14. The use of prayers to harm others is not biblical. Jesus didn't curse people on the cross. He forgave them. The fourth prayer you should stop praying is a prayer where you have manipulative motives. Praying with selfish intentions is not in line with God's will. James chapter 4 verse 3. We must understand that witchcraft is both a spiritual weapon in the hands of the devil, which works through sorcery spells, but witchcraft in Galatians 5 or sorcery is also mentioned as the work of the flesh. So one could be a tool in the kingdom of witchcraft, uh, cult, spells and all kinds of occultic practices, demonic objects. But there is also another form of witchcraft which is a work of the flesh. Both are demonic. But one is differently demonic. One is differently a form, a shade of that kingdom of Satan. Which is manifested in manipulation, intimidation and domination. It might not involve charms, spell casting or occult practices, but when you see manipulation and intimidation and domination, you're seeing a shade of witchcraft. When people begin to pray to manipulate God, intimidate God, corner God, threaten God in their prayer, those prayers are not pleasing to Him. The fifth type of prayer you should stop praying is a prayer where you invoke spirit guides and use occultic practices. Leaning on spirit guides or other demonic practices in prayer is strictly prohibited in the Bible. Now, not only in prayer, in life. You must understand that God has given us our greatest helper in prayer. That is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So people who lean on other spirits, evil spirits, and Satan sometimes can disguise himself as the angel of light. So you can have this spirit guide who keeps showing up and guiding you and taking your prayers and giving you all of these encouragements but, it, but they don't acknowledge Jesus, they don't acknowledge repentance and they don't honor the Bible. It's all about you, it's all about your dreams, then a new age comes in, you know, law of attraction comes in and then what begins to come in also is, you know, the universe, it's all about the universe, it's all about the positive thinking and, and in itself there's nothing wrong with positive thinking. But when you begin to connect with the spirit realm, the spirit guides and all kinds of demonic occultic practices, of course the devil isn't going to come to you with a fork and he's not going to present to you, hey, I'm the devil. He will wear the angel of light mask. And people who don't know the scriptures and who are not born again a lot of times lack discernment 
and they think, well, it's angels, well, it's prayer, well, I'm connecting with good vibes and good energy and, and I'm connecting to the universe, so, you know, I'm doing something right. Not really. There are prayers that are just demonic. You know, the Bible says that the priests and the prophets of Baal were prophesying, but they were demonic prophets. They would cut themselves to try to get their God to answer by fire. Not only he never responded, it was just a lot of hype, a lot of emotion, but there was no answer. So not every prayer is the same. Number six, you should stop praying this prayer. It's when you're seeking signs instead of God's Word. Now, there's nothing wrong with desiring signs. Gideon asked for a sign. We shouldn't be afraid to ask for the sign. When people obsess with signs, but they must understand that sometimes they find themselves in disappointment. God will send you a sign to confirm your faith, but He wants your faith to trust in His character and in His Word. Jesus says this wicked generation is chasing a sign. And the sign that was given to this generation, which is the sign of Jonah, as Jonah was in the belly for three days and three nights, so did Jesus was three days buried. And Jesus says, but that generation repented because they saw that sign. This generation does not. So what happens with people is they keep chasing signs instead of allowing the signs God already has left us, which is the sign of His Word, the sign of the death, the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ to guide, strengthen and confirm our faith. And then the rest of the signs, they'll follow us who believe. Number seven, it's when you're using objects as sources of power. Now, as Christians, you know, we have anointing oil that we use to anoint people for prayer of healing. But we don't use oil as a source of power. The power comes from the Holy Spirit. The power doesn't come from oil. We also see in the Bible, God used the staff of Moses. We see Jesus spit in somebody's eyes. We see that Jesus sent somebody to be washed in the water. But none of these things are the sources. They are simply the channels that God chooses to bring healing and restoration. The same way we can lay hands on the sick. The hands don't have any power. The power comes from the Holy Spirit. When you begin to bring crystals, when you begin to bring other objects into prayer, all kinds of candles, and you begin to see that these are the objects as sources of power for you. You are aiding and adding to your prayer witchcraft. If you need an object in your prayer to aid your prayer, that's not biblical. One thing that the Bible gives to us to strengthen our prayer is fasting. If you need something in your prayer, worship music, the Bible, a notebook, that's fine. But when you start to bring all kinds of stones and all kinds of other objects to help you connect with God, the way to God is through Jesus, not through a crystal or an object. Number eight is when you are praying for material wealth without seeking God's kingdom. The prayers of many people are like the prayer of a prodigal son. Father, give me what is mine. Give me health, give me wealth, give me fame, give me bling and bling. Make me happy and make me healthy. In itself, there's no problem with money. God owns a cattle on thousand hills. He gives power to get wealth. Silver and gold is mine, the Bible says. In itself, health is not bad. In fact, it's a gift from God. In itself, influence is not bad when it's used for its purposes. What begins to happen is when we violate Matthew 6, 33. And instead of seeking first the kingdom, we seek all the things that God promises to add to us if they're necessary. Prioritizing material wealth over spiritual growth can lead to a misguided prayer. In the kingdom, the king cares for his citizens. He will provide for us if we prioritize him first. So pray for the kingdom to come, His will to be done. Ask Him to provide for you. But your obsession and your passion is in the material, physical things. We don't ignore the needs. We don't ignore the importance of those things. But the passion and the priority is the kingdom of Jesus. 
So I hope this provided a little bit of clarity and maybe you found yourself in any of these steps and you have been practicing them unknowingly. Repent today. Maybe you've been practicing them intentionally. I want you to reconsider, look into the scriptures and you will see that the scripture does not encourage these practices. Walk away from that and follow biblical way for prayer to the Father, through the Son, by the Holy Spirit. Let me know in the chat what you've learned today and the prayer you're praying in this season of your life. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and also check out some links below this video. You will see links to other videos as well as to our courses and to books that I have written and so you can join our email list and receive weekly encouragements straight in your email box. God bless you.